All right, Galatians chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians chapter 3. I'll give a short charge and then we'll begin to pray because the devil is in trouble this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sorry for the power of darkness. We are back. Yeah. Absolutely. We are back. We are back with renewed strength. What a, what a profitable way to live. That your life consistently becomes a threat to darkness and an instrument of glory to Jesus. May your life be like that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3. The hearing of faith. From verse 5. The hearing of faith. I want to show you something that will be the trigger for the manifestation of God's power tonight. The Bible says, He therefore, we're reading verse 5, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and walketh miracles among you. He said, Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Verse 6 now. It says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Let's go back to verse 5. Read from Amplified, please. Very profound revelation. While I was studying this, I said, my goodness. This Bible, sometimes you would study it and then it looks like another layer just comes. The Bible says, Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you. The Bible says, help my screen. Okay. It says, does he do so by what the Lord demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you have heard? So the Bible tells us that there are two dimensions as far as experiencing the supernatural is concerned. Number one, he calls it the ministry of the spirit. Go back to KJV, please. The ministry of the Spirit. Number two, he calls it the working of miracles. So he says, He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and, that means they are not the same, and worketh miracles among you. How does he bring about this possibility? What is the ministry of the Spirit? The quickenings of the Spirit. Every activity of the Spirit upon your heart and upon your mind is called the ministry of the spirit listen very carefully even the miraculous is sponsored by the spirit but when we talk about the ministry of the spirit classically it is a capture of every divine activity of the spirit upon your heart and upon your mind bringing intelligence according to isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 and 2 all of those dimensions of the spirit the spirit of understanding the spirit of wisdom it is called the ministry of the spirit hallelujah so when you are gathered to experience the supernatural that the first thing you need to expect is that there will be the ministry or the quickening of the spirit things you did not know before are we together now some limitations in your thinking because you see notice that every time the move of the spirit happens there is always a blend of wisdom and power remember that to the greek christ is revealed as the wisdom of god and then as the power of god not everybody needs healing not everybody needs deliverance but there are many people who are stunted in life because they need a quickening in their understanding. Are we together? There's confusion. There's lack of direction. For many people, they are confused. They don't know what to do. This is the assignment of the ministry of the Spirit. So when he comes and breathes upon your heart, there are people who need conversion. They are dead as far as the things of God is concerned. They are not saved. And only the Holy Spirit can breathe upon the heart of a man akin to resurrection to bring someone from death to life, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I tell you, no amount of oratory and intelligence is enough to make someone willing to leave his old ways and to come to Jesus. No. 
if that were possible just by human wisdom, the Holy Spirit would not play any role in the salvation of men. Look at the man Saul, who later became Paul. There was nothing he did not hear. When Jesus was on earth, he was alive. Did you know that when James, when Stephen was being stoned, it was right before him, Saul, who later became Paul. He was the one who approved the stoning, the killing, the martyrdom of Stephen. And yet the man who later would become the chiefest of apostles, the spirit of God for you. So the Bible says, he that received or walked the ministry of the spirit. And then number two, he says, the walking of miracles. The walking of miracles. Not just the manifestation of miracles, the walking. You combine the spiritual factors that produce a miracle. How does he achieve this? Both the hearing of this, um, I mean the, the ministry of the spirit, the quickening, and then the working of miracles. He says all of this happened by the hearing of faith. Listen carefully. That means the ministry of the spirit tonight and the manifestation of the miracles that will soon be celebrating is at the mercy, not of the power of God, but of the hearing of faith. If something is wrong with the hearing of faith, it will affect the ministry of the Spirit. Are we together? And it will affect the manifestation of the power of God. The hearing of faith. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, these words. Watch this now. While Peter yet spake these words. Watch the ministry of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost fell, not on all them who were in the room on all them which had the word the holy ghost did not fall on all them that were in the room he fell on all them that heard the word because the ministry of the spirit is connected to the hearing of faith are we learning now what is the hearing of faith the hearing of faith is the entire process that leads to your believing god your receiving from him is called the hearing of faith the entire process that leads to your believing God and then your receiving from him. I hope we're following now. So we've established that the supernatural is predicated upon the hearing of faith. The ministry of the spirit and the working of miracles depends on the hearing of faith. And you see, I have a faith series already. So this is just a charge I'm giving us tonight. There are two dimensions to the hearing of faith listen carefully you really want to receive from god tonight god is not a magician god is not a superstitious person there are exact spiritual laws that translate to the miraculous there are exact spiritual laws that translate to supernatural solutions and even though the spirit of god is here present even though the word of god is here you must know how to combine it are we together now just because I give you the ingredients for a meal does not mean you produce a healthy meal. Everything a chef uses to produce a sumptuous meal is available for every other person. But the secret is in the intelligence to combine it. Are we learning now? Yes. There are two dimensions to the hearing of faith. Number one is called what you hear. The correctness of what you hear. Listen please. You cannot walk in genuine faith until you first vet what you hear the correctness of what you hear the information in mark chapter 4 23 and 24 mark 4 23 and 24 the bible says if any man have ears to hear let him hear that means not every man has that kind of ear then the next verse says give it to us please and he said unto them Take heed what you hear. Is someone in church? Take heed what you hear. Not just that you hear. The content, the correctness of the information upon which your faith is built on matters. There are many people who are exhibiting genuine faith but on wrong information. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood always had the ability to be healed but there was an information she needed to bring that miracle the power of god to heal her was always there 
But her problem was there was something she did not hear. Are we together now? The hearing of faith depends on number one, what you hear. The correctness of your information. Let's look at Luke chapter 13, please. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 13. We'll read 11, 12, then jump to 16 and 17. Luke 13. The Bible says, and behold, please follow carefully. I'm building your faith now. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years. How long? 18 years. And the Bible says that woman was bowed or bent together and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 12. The Bible says when Jesus saw her, I love Jesus, he called out to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. 13, um, or verse 16 now. The, remember when the woman was healed, all of these religious guys came and they began to probe him. Why are you healing her on the Sabbath? And Jesus said something profound. The hearing of faith. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Do you know what he's saying? That there was an information if this woman had, even before Jesus got there, she would have been healed. It is true. It was not Jesus who healed everybody in the Bible in the flesh. There were people who were healed even before he was born. Am I right? Even when he ascended to heaven, the apostles still healed. Ought not this woman. Nobody told her she was a daughter of Abraham. Nobody told her she was a partaker of the covenant and the promise. That means it was an anomaly for her being a daughter of Abraham to be in this condition. When Jesus saw her, he said, Ah, madam. You are in this situation even 18 years. Who has been preaching to you in the synagogue? He never told you what God had with Abraham that indeed shall the families of the earth be blessed. They were angry. As soon as he told the woman, he said, woman, leave that situation. Now, there is something that you should know that should stop you from remaining in that situation. Ought not this woman, the hearing of faith, it is not enough to hear. You must hear the correct information. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And I, I submit, I don't know everything. I'm learning. But when it has to do with this, this business of miracle, bar, I know something small about it. Hallelujah. There are certain things that if you are taught, if you really are taught it, at the end of that lecture, even before prayer, you will stand up. This is my business, oh. Are we together now? Most believers do not receive because there is, a, there is an information combination in the spirit that releases the power of God. And most people do not have the opportunity to hear that. It says, be careful what you hear. There are people who have had things that multiply their pain. There are people who have had things that multiply their frustration. And some of this information may come from we men of God, sincere and well-meaning. Just because you are sincere does not make what you are saying correct. Beware of what you hear. Could it be that there was something if you heard before now, you would not be in that situation. And now I'm not just speaking with respect to bodily infirmity alone. It affects every area of your life. We rise in this kingdom by light. It says, arise, shine, for your light is come. If that light does not come, you will stay down. Even if it's 18 years, even if it's 38 years, you will remain there until your light comes. Someone prophesy, say, my light has come. Let the devil hear you say, my light has come. The light that takes away shame, the light that takes away reproach, the light that takes away mediocrity, that light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Jesus himself is warning that the hearing of faith that allows for the ministry of the spirit, the hearing of faith, watch this now, that allows for the working of miracles depends on the correctness, the quality of what you hear. The power of God will not come to back a lie. The Spirit of God will not come to back a lie. He is called the Spirit of 
truth. Is someone learning? So he says, be careful what you hear. Let me give you a rundown of certain things you need to hear tonight and forever if you want to see the ministry of the Spirit and the power of God. My apologies, I'm not explaining them. I'm just going to list them. There is a faith series already designed for you and I'll take time to deal with this in detail. This year, your faith must work. Yeah. This year, the devil must know your faith is working. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, very quickly. The first information that powers the faith of people as far as the correctness of information is concerned is that number one, God is love. This is very powerful. As simple and as frail as that statement sounds, that is the foundation for the believer walking in the miraculous. God is love. First John chapter 4 verse 8 and verse 16. God is is love say it after me please god is love one more time the moment you have this awareness that god is love and i told you while i started preaching that it is in the character of love to give immediately you know that every time love comes there is always something to give this is the basis of your expectation god will never 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 come to you and not give something mm -mm. God is love. Number two, that Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love to you. Jesus came. The reason why he walked upon the earth, the reason why he died, the reason why he resurrected was to reveal the Father's love to you or for you. Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love for you and the Father's love towards you. John chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, For God so loved Joshua Selman. For God so loved Koinonia. For God so loved your family. For God so loved your ancestry. He knew there was something wrong with your ancestry. That's why he sent Jesus. He knew there was something wrong with your background, your foundation. That's why he sent Jesus. Every time you see Jesus, I want you to see God's love in action. The reason why Jesus came was not just to demonstrate power. He came as an expression of the love of God. That is still the reason why he comes. Anytime he comes, even by his word. When the word of God comes, it comes to reveal the Father's love. Hmm. Are you learning now? Remember, we're discussing what you hear. You can hear something that gives you power. Right now, someone is listening to me. You have some back pain. Someone is listening to me. Maybe you came here with some crutch or you, are, you don't have, you know, the ability to walk. Someone is coming here now. Maybe you are deaf. Maybe you are blind. This is what empowers you. It is not superstition. So this is how much he loves me. Every time the word comes, it is the love of God coming to me. Coming to bring me healing. Someone is seated here right now. All plagued by all kinds of satanic manipulations from your family. They've looked at you and said you are the black sheep of that family. Like Gideon, that your family will never rise. How many businessmen are here already frustrated and disoriented? This is January. And yet they are already afraid. How will February be? My goodness, this is what you get when you come to church. There is something that when you hear fear dies. There is something when you hear faith rises. There is a young man hearing me now. You are wondering, the only person to help me has relocated. Could it be that God allowed him to relocate so that your real helper will come? Are you learning now? So number one, God is love. Number two, Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love for you. Number three, hear this, hear this, hear this. The price for your sin, the price for your healing, the price for your deliverance, the price for freedom from poverty has been fully paid. Underline fully paid. The price has been paid. If I enter a mall with you, and then I look at you and I say, you know what? I want to show you how much I love you. And then I pick a few things and I pay for all of them. Just because I paid for them does not mean you will have it. 
you can choose to watch and say wow he has paid for them but the way this officer is eyeing me do i have the courage to go and carry it the awareness that the price has been paid for is where the boldness to receive comes from are we together when you have the money to pay for anything nobody will ask you your age for most things nobody will say where are you coming from are you Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, Northern and South Southern and it doesn't matter the reason why many are afraid to receive salvation to receive healing is because they think because of the manipulations of Satan and darkness is it really true that the price has been paid listen unclean spirits including satan as stubborn spirits they depend on revelation to bow just because it is finished and it is done does not mean satan will clear out of the way he's a stubborn spirit if satan were not stubborn we would not need power the only thing we need is wisdom god left power as proof that these unclean spirits are stubborn. They know the price to be free from this untimely death in your family. They know the price to be free from this going up and down in terms of poverty and failure. They know it's been paid. They know you are a young man that the anointing of the spirit is upon. They know that you are the one destined to rise and wipe the tears of your family. But they will lie to you and use the things that you see and keep you down. But thank God you came for miracle service tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The price for your sin. I don't care what you have done or not done. The price has been paid. I don't care what kind of sickness. Look at the lady. How do you remove, you know, do, did you hear that testimony? I know many of you still didn't believe it. That is your business. The girl has been healed. The person who received it is showing you that this is my evidence. Say amen. amen. It's like someone said, I just made money and you say you don't believe it. How does that change the person? <laughs> Some of us are used to the word not working. You always doubt when it works. And yet we say, Lord, I believe you. And God says, okay, let me come through for you. And you cannot even believe. I'm not talking of stage manage, exaggerated testimonies, lies. No, no, no. We're responsible people. As much as possible, we will not come and testify things here that did not happen. There is no pressure whatsoever. Are we together now? It's, it's an unnecessary burden. But if it happens and it will give God glory, we will not keep quiet. The price has been paid. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Let's hurry up. Colossians 12, 1 to 14, please. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us, watch this now, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13, now, the Bible says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. Someone hear this, hear this. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14 now, in whom we have redemption. How? Through his blood. That is the price, the blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians chapter 2, 13 to 15. Let's hurry up. These are the things you need to hear. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses how many all. then blotting out the handwriting of ordinances you know what the handwritings are in joshua selman's family let no one rise because of where he comes from if people are about to rise let them die these things are ordinances they are not statements they were not written with pen and paper they were written with blood and sacrifices whether in ignorance or in idol worship they are called ordinances but the bible says there is a master cleaner that can wipe this away blotting out listen if you don't believe this you will not have the confidence to receive. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. 
The writing was not for your favor. What was there, I don't know what it is, but I know it was to destroy me. Which was contrary to us. What is contrary? Against, opposing. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up. Hear me, the price for your healing tonight, fully paid. Yeah. Hear me, in our economy, we allow for part payment. And sometimes the owner gets angry and says, you are paid, but you didn't pay all. If your rent is 1.2 million, you can pay 400,000 and say, please give me some time. The man can say, okay, depending on his own state, if life presses him, he can come back and say, I changed my mind. That's why he paid fully. Fully means not owing anything again. So that which was supposed to keep me down, ordinarily it was supposed to keep me down, except that someone came in my stead and paid that price. Notice, the next thing in the Bible that followed paying the price is an advocacy for a lie. The moment Jesus resurrected, the next plan was cover this up. Let people not know. That is always what happens. The next thing, when Satan knows that this is a reality, the next thing becomes to cover it up so that you will never find out that because my father died an idol worshiper, and buried all kinds of people and I came from that lineage it doesn't have to be that way the price has been paid Amen. hallelujah Amen. price has been paid how was the price paid by a righteous man being unrighteous so that unrighteous people might be righteous hmm. paid the next thing you have any devilish dream and you see some other people calling you tell them you are calling the wrong person no no update your data in the spirit you are calling the wrong person no you are calling the wrong person calling you to come and do what and die calling you to have the cancer calling you to have the no you are calling the wrong person listen don't just this is a miracle service already this is the ministry of the spirit something is happening to you just because you cannot speak English who said you cannot rise just because you left a, a house where the roof is leaking to come here who told you that must be your destiny nobody ever rises until you are mindful of what you hear God is love what you hear Jesus came as an expression of the love of God what you hear he came to demonstrate the love of God is someone learning now many of us have been hearing a lot of things and it has destroyed our potential the price for all that you will be receiving tonight is fully paid last year we had our workers dinner and I watched as my precious people came gallantly and sat down and ate with joy and confidence everything that was before them. Some did not spare at all. They had no time for any, any composure that leads to regret later on. They ate whatever they had in front of them. Say fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. The price for your rising fully paid now listen you will be wondering why it's been fully paid 
and yet it is not yet your inheritance. This is my assignment to show you. But whether or not you have experienced the dimensions of God you need, the first thing is to accept that it is fully paid. Fully paid. Longevity, fully paid. Prosperity. Say that one again. Prosperity. Your health and your life. Entering into your prophetic destiny. The price for that mantle to rest on your life. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. If you like, show me the photos of my forefathers holding arrows and burying whatever. Congratulations for connecting me to history. But from the realm of the spirit, you are talking to the wrong person. Honestly, this is what I believe. Fully paid. Somebody, that, that's your revelation in Koinonia this night. Fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. The devil can go places it is fully paid. Fully paid. Sit down please. Do you know why this is powerful? Because you will see people receiving things tonight that they don't look like. It was not them that paid it. Someone paid it for them. Listen. If you think you are so poor and you are so weak and I decide to pay for a five bedroom flat with a three bedroom BQ, you will even be afraid as you are entering it. But it is still paid. You will adjust when you are inside. You can't adjust outside. The adjustment happens inside. It's a miracle service, so it's still a miracle service. Number four, let's hurry up. What is the fourth revelation you must have? It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not give God glory. This is an uncomfortable truth, but you must accept it. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. This awareness is what will plant a dissatisfaction in you that even if it is after one year, I will fight the fight of faith. You cannot fight until you are aware that that current situation is not the will of God. If it is the will of God, then that means you are fighting God. If you think sickness is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God trying to get healed. If you think poverty is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God. The awareness of the will of God is what gives you the confidence to know what to fight and to know what to allow. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. Matthew chapter 8, 1 to 3. My goodness, let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 8. Watch this. When he was come down from the mountain, the Bible says, a great multitude followed him. Verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, give us amplified, in fact. Amplified, thank you. Behold, a leper came to him, prostrating himself. He worshipped him and said, Lord, if you are willing, I don't know whether this is your will, you are able to cleanse me from, by curing me, verse 3. Read it as loud as you can. My God, I sense the power of God already. And he reached out and touched him saying, I am willing. One more time. I am willing. One more time. As a result, be cleansed. I am willing. Prosper. I am willing. Rise. I am willing. Be great. You need to know what the will of God is. This is one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit. Man of God, it is the will of God for you to excel in ministry. It's not the will of God for you to be small. Souls cannot be saved when you are small. Don't mind ignorant people. It is God's will for you to rise, to contend for strategic kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty. It is the will of God for you to be anointed in ever increasing dimensions so you can do more for Jesus. It is the will of God for you to prosper so you can give in conferences like this without it affecting you and without you frowning. The 
the will of God. That means everything that is not the will of God tonight, let that become your prayer request. Let that become your, your point of annoyance. You are a man of God and you came here and it looks like you love God sincerely, but ministry is not working. Don't sit down wondering, is it the will of God to lift me? Now you know what to pray for when it's time to pray. Lord, the anointing that brings consolation to men in ministry, that that grace will locate me indeed. <laughs> let me give you one more everything that does not glorify God is not the will of God and then the final thoughts that I will give you can you imagine we're just dissecting what you hear God is glorified when the word is made manifest in your life God is glorified. You are not the only one who is happy. It is in God's interest that the word works for you. God is glorified when the word is made manifest in your life. Matthew chapter 9, 6 to 8. Let's hurry up. Matthew 9, 6 to 8. But that ye may know, this is the healing of the paralytic. Remember, they brought a man who had palsy. He was paralyzed. And they asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus said, your sins be forgiven you. And he, they called him blasphemous. And he now said, which is easier? But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said unto the sick of palsy, arise. Take up your bed and go to your house. Next verse, please. And he arose and departed to his house. Verse 8. <laughs> And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. There are men that have such power. Did you hear what I said? Not everyone, but there are men that God gave such power. What kind of power? The power to heal. The power to silence your yesterday. Did you hear what I'm saying? There are men, and as I'm saying it now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands as one by grace who has been given such power. It's God that gives men such power. That everything that has mocked God in your life, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, let it die permanently this night. Give us that scripture. But the multitude saw it. If it is God, men must see it. Are we together? It is your training that is in secret. When God begins to display his hand upon your life, the multitude saw it like you will be seen shortly. And the Bible says they marveled. But you see, this is the difference between the promotion of flesh and the glorification of Jesus. When men marvel and the credit goes to the man of God, then something is wrong. Anything that is sponsored by the Spirit of God must directly glorify the Christ. They marveled and they glorified God, which had given such power. I found this scripture and I said, my God, he never said had given power. There is something called such power power signature results that only come with certain dimensions of impartation such power given such power that you can tell somebody by this week may God lift you there is a grace listen if you don't have it humble yourself and find out how to receive it but don't say because I don't have it is not there there are people who are given such power For everyone who has attended this miracle service, I'm prophesying to you in the name of Jesus before this week is over. May my God, by the administration of such power, surprise you in a way that will bring tears from your eyes. Surprise you in a way that will bring tears to your eyes. If God can replace a fallopian tube that has been removed, medically proven, May my God replace everything that has been lost in your life.
Do you believe this? So the hearing of faith, it says, beware of what you hear. Sit down. Let me wrap up. Then we begin to minister. Hallelujah. The next dimension to the hearing of faith is found in Luke 8, 18. Give us amplified. Luke 8, 18. He now says, be careful how you hear. This is the second dimension to the hearing of faith. The first talks about the correctness of the information. But the second talks about your attitude while you receive. Don't just be careful about what you hear. You must be careful how you hear it. For to him who has spiritual knowledge, more will be given. And to him who does not have spiritual knowledge, even that which he thinks and guesses and supposes that he has, will be taken away from him. Hallelujah. So the first talks about the correctness of the spiritual information upon which your faith is built. But the second talks about your attitude, teachability, the swiftness to obey, trembling at the word of God, not bringing all kinds of um, arguments around the word of God and rendering it of none effect through your traditions. Hebrews chapter 4, I'm reminded from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. The promise is for us, but we can miss it out that any of you should come short of it. Verse 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this. As well as unto them. So there are two groups of people, us and them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So their problem was not hearing. They had the truth. But they did not mind the attitude. They doubted, oh, is it true that God can do this? I know this is true, but can God turn my life around? Can I really be a, a Deborah? Can God pick me from this lowly estate with all my limitations? There are two cautions in scripture. Number one, what you hear. Number two, how you hear. James chapter 1, 22 and 25. Be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only. It starts with hearing. But performance is not just about hearing. It says if you hear only, you are deceiving your own self. Next verse please. It says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. He not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. He said, this man shall be blessed in how many? All his deeds. All his deeds. Say, I'm a doer. Lay your hands on your head and prophesy. Say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. The grace to do is released upon me. In the name of Jesus. I wrote something here and I want you to listen. Only those who obediently act on the word get results from it. Only those who obediently act on the word get results from it. Only those who obediently act on the word get results from it. He that ministered to you the spirit and worked miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? That means if you want to work miracles, the first raw material is to bring the correct information by the Spirit. Serve it to God's people with excellence. Then the next thing, cultivate an attitude of faith within them. You see, this is what the Bible calls the sent word. Psalm 107 and verse 20. He sent forth his word and healed them. Not he spake his word the sent word and delivered them from their destructions. Hear me, Koinonia. 
the word that is about to come that will produce the supernatural miracle right now is a sent word and there are three ways to access the sent word can i give you that before we pray number one light from scripture the first way believers access the sent word is light from scripture light from scripture right for reference luke chapter 4 from verse 17 to 21 jesus was in the temple and it was delivered to him the book and he found there where it was written and verse 21 says when he looked at them their faces were fastened on him and he said this day is this scripture that was written fulfilled in your ears light from scripture hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do to do thy will it is written already light from scripture you can find from scripture what god has said and that becomes a sent word number two sent words come as prophetic instructions directly from god or through his anointed vessels this is the second way we access the sent word number one light from scripture number two instructions directly from god by his spirit or from his anointed vessels john chapter 5 6 to 9 we see the power of the sent word as instructions when jesus saw him lie him being the man who had been at bethesda for 38 years and knew that he had now been a long time he said to him will thou be made whole next verse please the impotent man said sir i have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool but while i am coming another step it down before me verse 8 jesus said to him if you believe rise up take your bed correct information he heard well now what was going to be his response to the sent word the bible says immediately at the instance of the word the man was made whole whether he knew he was made whole or not was a different thing but the bible says he was made whole and he proved that he believed he was whole by taking up his bed and he walked and that same day was the sabbath so a word can come in the name of jesus christ if you've not walked stand up and walk you can sit down there and perhaps not get a miracle but somebody will take a step of faith check your body do when prophetic instructions come they are not just some gimmicks and mechanics from men of god it is by the spirit it is a sent word sometimes it can be to shout sometimes it can be to lay your hands can be to keep quiet under an atmosphere of the spirit you must believe and respect the sent word that comes as prophetic instructions number three how does the sent word come by prophetic declarations these ones are not instructions they are speakings ezekiel 37 7 i prophesied as i was commanded he did not instruct the bones he prophesied and there was a noise and behold a shaking and bones came together bone to his bone i prophesied as i was commanded Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 2 and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me let me recap again that when it has to do with the administration of the sent word there are three biblical ways the sent word that brings healing that brings deliverance that brings lifting comes to believers number one light from scripture number two prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come and he said come he never said peter come he said come whoever acted on that instruction would have been the beneficiary of that word and then number three prophetic declarations i always wondered why our fathers of faith would spend almost half of their preaching time speaking and making declarations that literally sometimes these fathers can go for ministrations and not even preach so much they just tell you that they came to speak and prophesy 
And sometimes naive and ignorant people say, what is all this one now? And then they keep praying. May God bless you. May God open doors. And people are shouting amen. And usually you will see someone very proud and careless with no results. Wondering, okay, will this work? And you will see somebody with their hearts opened. An attitude that compels the spirit of glory to rest on them. Days, hours, weeks, years later, people return with strange testimonies. All these three you are going to receive. You have already received light from scripture. The next is going to be the prophetic instruction backed up with prophetic declarations. There is no reason why the sent word should not work in your life. Are you ready to receive? Rise up, please. And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in here, all the overflows outside, it does not matter. Let your heart be ready and open. And for a global family following from across the globe, I want you to believe that everything you have heard is truth according to God's word. Go ahead and pray now. I receive your sent word. I receive your sent word. I receive your sent word. Someone is praying. I receive your sent word. I receive. I manifest. Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Shabala kaparaku sabranda balakusiada. This right here is the dynamics of walking in the supernatural. I do not know what you wrote in your request. Hear me believers. I don't know what pain brought you here. Some of you traveled from nation to nation across the seashore to be here. Do not waste your moment. Some of you are coming here for the first time. Some of you are men of God, businessmen, parents, young people, politicians, elders. It does not matter. The rule is the same. He that cometh to God must come believing that he exists and then that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In one minute, I'd like you to say, Father, I am here now. Visit me. Visit me. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony by the Spirit of the living God. Are you praying? God will surprise you. That you can be sure. You go ahead and pray. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I want you to listen carefully. If you came here with any kind of neck pain, any kind of neck pain, whether there's a bracelet on your neck or some medical, you cannot move your neck, any kind of neck pain, 
whether you are inside you are outside I want you to lay your hands there right now the power of God is healing people you are not able to move or you are not able to move well your neck lay your hands there right now lay your hands there right now father in the name of Jesus Christ necks every neck pain by the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare let the healing power of Jesus rest upon that neck now rest upon that neck now rest upon that neck now the power of God is coming on a lady right now. I'm seeing a divine surgical procedure that is happening in your stomach. This is something that looks like a swelling around the left side of your stomach. But the power of God is touching you right now. Right now. Touching you by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's someone you cannot chew with the left side of your tooth it looks like um something is shocking you your molars it's like you feel a lot of painful sensation right now as i'm speaking to you the power of god is resting upon you now i'm going to give you some instructions shortly but i just want you to follow something is happening Right now, please take it high for me. You are not going to shout. Just allow me to do the speaking. And I want you to bring all those under the anointing now when I make that declaration. You don't shout. Usually I'll ask you to shout, but the Lord is telling me something differently. And I want to please ushers will be very, very fast. I'm seeing a door in the spirit this is what I'm seeing and I'm seeing there are chains tied to that door and tied to people this is what the Lord is showing me and the Lord is saying these people need to be set free now some of them are whole families some of them are individuals who have been asking what is the cause of this issue in our life right now I'm going to pray Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone who is tied by any demonic chain of witchcraft, I told your people that the price has been fully paid. And I announce again to the realm of the spirit that every price for your liberty has been paid. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, be released now. Be released now. Bring them out. Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh. Ta da 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 da. Ta da 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 da. Ta da da da. At the count of three I'm seeing fire falling now and as soon as that happens please bring them out quickly there are chains that are going to be breaking right now age long chains father in the name of Jesus everyone under the sound of my voice who has been bound by witchcraft of any kind at the count of three let those chains be broken now one two three break now break now break now Break now! Break now! Break now! Break now! Sakate pakato katsegeta. I command those chains to be broken. No matter how long they have tied you, tied your family, tied.
find your destiny in the name of Jesus be broken right now chains of poverty chains of sickness afflictions of any and all kinds be broken now bring them out mysterious chains afflictions in the dream all kinds of things eating demonic things going to satanic places I arrest them now by the fire of the Holy Ghost I arrest them now by the fire of the Holy Ghost hear me I'm hearing in my spirit remove names from covens in the name of Jesus this one I'm going to pray for you I'm going to ask you to shout Jesus any name of anyone here or any family that has been written in any satanic coven right now as you shout that name let fire burn everything right now one two three shout Jesus let it be burnt now let it be burnt now every ordinance every ill speaking every ordinance be broken be broken blotting out every handwriting be broken in the name of Jesus please bring them out quickly whether you are an usher or not if someone is under the anointing close to you please bring them there's a reason I ask you to bring them the ushers are limited my apologies but please help them chains 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 be broken chains be broken chains be broken I'm hearing Kogi state Kogi state Kogi state what is it that has to do with ancestry that is tying down people from that region right now you are from that state anything that has hapakatoskiata that has tied you down be broken now be broken now I'm hearing Kogi state let it be broken now let it be broken now hallelujah now please hear me the Lord wants to bring deliverance to families if at all they marry the women must return back to their parents homes I'm praying for you I don't know what curse and what yoke is upon such families but right now in the name of Jesus by the authority that is in the finished work of Christ let that curse be broken now 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 I'm hearing in my spirit shame and reproach hear me I preached a message here last year called Ichabod there are many of you as you are standing now there is no dignity and no honor in your life everything that represents honor for you and your family has been taken away by darkness can I pray for you that veil I, I tell you I see the power of God resting on people right now every veil sitting on your head covering your glory bringing shame and reproach I tear that veil now I tear that veil now I tear that veil now. I tear that veil now. I'm hearing a name Jennifer. Jennifer. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. let me tell you if God locates you that's the end of it mm. Jennifer I want to pray for you there is one of you I'm seeing that people don't rise there's a spirit I'm seeing like like stones this is what I'm seeing father I don't know what altar has tied down Jennifer's destiny but right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus let that altar catch fire now 
Let it catch fire now. Let it catch fire now. Let it catch fire now. There's someone they call you Junior. Your name is Junior. I don't know, Junior. That's what they call you. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. They call you Junior. I want to pray for you. Please make sure you don't tell lies. If you are not Junior, sit back quietly so that we don't waste time. Junior. There's someone, the power of God is coming on you. You work in UBA, United Bank for Africa. There is trouble. I need to pray for you. UBA, you work in UBA. I want to pray for you. In the name that is above all names, I'm praying for that gentleman. You are a male. In the name of Jesus, every conspiracy that is about to lead to your losing your job because you came here this night. What God says to one, he says to all. In the name of Jesus, anything that wants you to leave what God gave you, whether it's a job, whether it's a position, I arrest it now in the name of Jesus. Junior. Why am I saying ladies? You are called Junior? Okay, Jennifer. Junior. Father, my friend, God is going to use you mightily, this man. Eh? I don't know you. But you need, you need God to train you and build you. But there is a mighty man of God that is coming out of you. I'm praying that the grace of God will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Junior, I want to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm seeing one of you is like a spirit. And I'm seeing crying upon your mother's coffin. That something happened and she just died. In the name that is above all names. I pray for you, Junior. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, every pit the devil is digging for your mother to enter and die because you have come here, they are exempted from death. They are exempted from death. I'm seeing someone you deal with metals. Metals, is it construction or fabrication? You deal with metals. I'm seeing someone stand and all around him I'm seeing metals. I want to pray for you. For these ladies, have I prayed for them? Jennifer, please help them. Jennifer. There are two of you. I just saw light come on you. And the Lord is telling me that everything that represents reproach is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Believe what you are seeing, no, because what God is doing here, He's doing the same thing in your life now. He's doing the same thing in your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, um, the Lord is asking me to pray for someone who will be very fast about this. And I don't want you to be embarrassed. If you're not comfortable coming out, that's fine. Don't come out. But you are trusting God for male children. This is your prayer. You have cried this thing and cried. God gave you female. I don't know. But your prayer is for a male child. Ordinarily, I would not want to ask you to come out. But I'm hearing this in my spirit. God does these things as a witness. So that men will know that there is a God in heaven. You are trusting God for a male child not that there is anything wrong with gender whatever number one make sure you are married number two you are trusting god please if i call you let's be able to distinguish who is who is um, coming if i've prayed for you in jesus name you are you are blessed we'll take testimony shortly please quickly quickly if you are coming out come if it's a spouse you can come together A lady is going to start shouting and prophesying by the Spirit. It is a grace that is coming upon her. And she's going to be used mightily by God for her family.
remember when the spirit that was upon Moses rested upon 70 elders listen let me tell you sincerely my dear people God answers prayers that you have come here openly I pray for you the women can place their hand on, on their stomach the men your chest or just connect by faith in the name of Jesus I pray for you there's one of you I'm seeing something tie you that thing is about to leave you now I'm seeing something like a snake tying you let it go now by the power that raised Christ from the dead it must release you now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying but the person the power of God is coming on is in the congregation every time you are pregnant you see snakes serpents and when that happens you must lose that pregnancy God is ministering to that person now wherever you are I stretch my hands whatever connects you to serpentine spirits that will not allow you rise in the name of Jesus be free now be free now be free now for those of you in front here because you have come by the word of the Lord and I'm praying for those in front but it includes everyone I see lots of people at the overflows in the name of Jesus according to the time of life may the Lord give you the male children you desire I don't know if you are going to believe this but there's one of you standing in front here the Lord is doing a divine surgery now I'm seeing something being removed from your stomach literally as you are standing in front here in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God right now may the Lord do that supernatural surgery that supernatural surgery the Lord is asking me to pray for someone you just stand and you start misbehaving for a few minutes people have been suspecting that you have um, I don't know what the medical condition will be now but this is something like an early stage of madness you just misbehave you become disoriented a spirit comes on you and you want to remove your clothes you are an adult I'm not talking of a small child and I'm not talking of maybe someone autistic if there's such a person as that please come out I want to pray for you so that God will deliver you now for those of you who are in front here in the name of Jesus according to the time of life go and return with your children in Jesus name we pray amen and amen Christopher 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 I'm hearing the name Christopher 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 Shani Sali Kabaruska Brendigidia. Sir, where are you coming from? East. Oh, yeah. I want to pray for you. Thanks. Don't feel bad, eh? But I need to pray for you. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin. And I'm wondering what is somebody who is alive doing inside a coffin? You see, let me tell you. We are intelligent people. Though. When we deal with demonic people, we are not stupid people. There is a place for principles and intelligence, but if you walk with God and God opens your eyes to the realm of the spirit, that's when you will know that evil is real. Christopher, I'm looking, don't be embarrassed. If God calls you here, it's because he, he's bringing you liberty. That you are looking at a man standing, but in the spirit you are seeing somebody inside a coffin. What is he doing there? One day, an ordinary bike will just hit you and you just fall down and that will be the end of it. No anything that is plotting death for you hear me in the name of Jesus like Haman whoever digs a pit may they fall into it I say it again whoever digs a pit in the name of Jesus they fall into it Christopher in the name of Jesus I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead one of you will start shaking now very strong under the anointing not just falling shaking I don't know why but this is what I saw in my vision 
shaking like somebody is vibrating under the power of God and it's an impartation that is happening to you it's not deliverance it's an impartation by the spirit I stretch my hands now over Christopher particularly this man that I prophesy to ah you are receiving the spirit of wisdom there is a Christopher that is receiving the spirit of wisdom extraordinary results will happen by the wisdom of God in your life sir by the power of the prophetic I bring you out of every coven every grave in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah there are many many pastors here many many pastors but there is a pastor there is a pastor that is i'm um, not the basement the other overflow the smaller one before outside there is a pastor there if you locate a pastor there please i want him to come i want to pray for him his life is about to change in the name of jesus christ <laughs> hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone, your mother sells food. Don't be embarrassed. Your mother sells food by the roadside. This is, a, I'm seeing a vision. Your mother sells food by the roadside, but you are a diligent person and you want to move forward with your life. This is what your mother does. And she's been taking care of her family. The Lord is saying I should impart favor on you. I don't know who that person is. Don't tell lies your mother, not your auntie, not your relative, your mother. Come. One of the first laws of receiving from God is obedience. You can't tell lies and want to come and receive. There are some of you who want to come out for everything. If it's not your word, just be patient. I've taught you on faith. Be patient. God will speak to you. He doesn't have to directly call. My God, something is going to happen to these people now. Hi. This my God, this my God. Your mother is selling by the roadside. Please make sure you. Number two, don't be embarrassed. There's one of you here. You are living in the house of a rich man. You know what I mean. Leave that house after the service. Because I'm seeing something that has to do with the ritual with you. I fear God though, and I respect myself. I will not hold the mic here before the whole world and be talking stupid things. I'm telling you now. This man sleeps with you. That's your work. Let me just go straight. I'm sorry for being vulgar. I know we're talking to the whole globe. But this is yours. It's not like your house help or maybe they employed you. This is your work. I'm telling you this. They are going to ask that man to bring somebody and he's going to bring you. The house of God is like a hospital. There are times you are performing surgery on people. It may look messy, but the truth is that the end is the health and the safety of the people. Hallelujah. Your mother, I'm going to pray for you because many of you here, you love God. Don't be ashamed though. Don't say my mother sells something and is petty and so on and so forth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. You are about to witness the lifting power of Jesus. Because for some of you, the first thing I want to do here is to break. There is a curse that will not allow your family members rise. And for some of you, if I don't pray for you, not to insult your mother, but what she's doing is what you will still do, even if you're a graduate. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Every spirit that will not allow you rise. As I'm praying for them, I'm praying for you. Whatever wants to keep you down, that you will not rise, that you will not shine, that you will not thrive. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over it now. I take authority over it now. I take authority over it now. Hear me? 
Hence God called you people to come out here. I decree and declare the grace called favor that rests upon people and rewrites their story. If you believe this, I impart that grace upon you. I impart that grace upon you. I impart that grace upon you. You will return a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be offended, but I'm repeating this last prophetic word I gave again. You are staying in the house of a rich man. In fact, it's not even a house he stays. It's like an extra house aside from his real house. And I don't know what goes on there. That is none of my business. But I know that there's someone that stays there. And you are not necessarily a prostitute. But what happens there is in one word is prostitution. I'm advising you by the spirit of God. Get out of that place. Get out of that place. Your life is in danger. Hallelujah. Get out of that place, oh. Your life is in danger. In the name of Jesus. There's one of you, you have now. I, I don't, I'm saying this because this is church. You love the Lord with all your heart. And God has given you a good voice to sing. But somebody advised you that you should not mind church people. You should go and do secular music. And you are about to start. Hear what the Lord is telling you. Stop. You are going to be made to do a lot of things that will end up destroying your destiny. You can serve the Lord and he can bless your gift and still lift you. Did you hear what I'm saying? You serve the Lord. Just this row. There are two people the power of God is coming on. Please bring them out. This row. Bring them out. Why are they here? Pastors. From everywhere or where I, I ask. You are all pastors. Do you love Jesus? Do you know? Hold on please. I don't waste my time praying for people as far as ministry is concerned. Honestly, I love the body of Christ, but I found out that there are pastors who generally don't love God. They just want to make it. For that one, I'll just pray that God will give you an idea so that you go and start something and take care of yourself and your family. The work of ministry is beyond getting something to eat. And I respect all of you for your diligence to come. It's a word God gave me, oh, the people down. I want to pray for you. My first charge for you is go back and re-examine what you are doing in ministry. If you find out that there is an approach that is, is not of God, you don't need to feel bad. Get away and do authentic ministry. Loving Jesus, loving... And it's not just a word for them. Please hear me. Hold on, please. If you are a pastor here, let me encourage you. The work of the kingdom is not just a means for bread. It's not just that when you apply for federal government work, there's no work. You apply and then you just say, let me get into ministry. The Bible says, whose God is their belly? If you answer the call of God in, in your life, it should be that number one, you love Jesus genuinely. Number two, you love his people. If you love Jesus and you don't love his people, you will manipulate them. Are we together? God will never trust you with people you do not love. And if the goal is just fame, there are many other ways to be famous. You can write a book. You can run and win Olympic. You can try Guinness Book of Records. There are many, many ways. But if it is the call to ministry, you must die to yourself. Hallelujah. And there's a reason why God called you people out. Some of you are already doing, I don't know what, what level of, I'm not calling all men of God, just the ones from that overflow. I don't know why. It may be because of one person who loves God. Some of you need to correct some things. Some of you need to adjust some things. Some of you need to delete certain things. They've told you this, how money comes. This mm -hmm. Your job is to serve Jesus. If God gives you only two members, love them. Serve them with all your heart. Take away competition and don't try to use crowd just as the index for ministry. Yours is to serve God sincerely. If you end up winning two people 
and those are the ones God sent to you. You are by far more effective than the person God gave the anointing for 100 million and he won only 10 million. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. God brought you for a reason. First, let me cast out a spirit from one of you. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Don't be embarrassed, my, my dear people. I decree and declare because I'm seeing something that looks like a black shadow. I decree and declare anyone that this thing has tied down that will not allow you to be effective in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be free now. Mm. Be free now. Be free now. And then I impart grace on you. I impart grace on you. This gentleman wearing white, I'm praying for you, eh? Let the healing anointing this is what the Lord is showing me. May that grace truly rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. There's one of you, you are receiving the grace of a teacher. A prophetic teacher. The word of God will open before you in a very strange way. And you will start having unusual understanding. In the name of Jesus. There is a lady, you are a music, not a musician, I, I will call you a worshiper. But there is a teaching grace that is coming on that worship ministry. This is what God is telling me. A, you started in worship, but there is a teaching grace that God is releasing on that worship ministry. You will marvel and wonder at the way you begin to operate. You will have very superior spiritual understanding. Very superior spiritual understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to pray for someone. The prayer is not for you. It's for your loved one. I'm seeing in the spirit. Your, the leg of somebody swelling more than the other one. This is the condition. I don't know if this thing has to do with liver. But I'm seeing so, somebody's leg. I want... You can come and stand in for that person. I want to pray quickly and then we'll pray for the sick. If there's someone like that, very quickly, please. Very quickly. Please make sure you understand what I'm saying. The glory of God is in this place. The glory of God is in this place. You know that thing they say somebody match up. Have you heard those kind of things? That they say, I don't, have, I, I don't know whether I believe it or not. I just know that if he's wrong, he will be corrected. But this is the kind of thing that happened to someone. And the leg just started swelling. Swelling. Huh? I'm going to, I've not prayed for the sick yet. We're going to pray. 19 years you've been a graduate. No job. I just saw this. 19 years. Exactly 19 years. As a graduate, no job. Who is that person? I want to use you as a point of contact and release jobs. Honestly, for anybody who believes that this is your year, when I'm praying for that person, make sure you receive it. Where is that person? 19, 1, 9. This is what God is revealing to me. Meanwhile, let me pray for these people. All of you are coming out for people whose legs have a problem? Where? Let me talk to one or two of you. Is it your own leg? My mother-in-law's leg from Cameroon. Your mother-in-law? From Cameroon. You came from Cameroon? Yes. What of this woman? I came from Togo, my leg. Your own leg? Yes. Oh, I see. Look at that. Even my hands. They what said, happened to you? They said I matched something. They threw an arrow. I don't know. You matched something? That's what they said. It started scratching me and it just become... It's crawling. Can you see? No, no, no. That, that's all right, madam. You don't have to lift. Here. Don't worry. Your feet is okay, eh? We can see what is there. How long has this been? It's now, for God's now. sake, ladies and gentlemen, you look at this. 
You came from Togo. Togo. Yes, sir. Let me see the leg. Just that part. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Are you seeing this? How did this start? Huh? Just like scratching me. How, when was this? That was like seven months ago. It's just like it was just like a little thing. As I scratched, Who is this one? what happened to you? It's well enough, and they say it's a kidney disease for two years. It's, it's all right. I'm going to pray for you. And this is this is your condition. It's small and it's spreading and it's like it's coming. No, it's just moving. I feel some sensation. I'm moving. going to pray for you. Your loved ones, all of you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. I've not even started praying for the sick. This is just one condition. You see, every time people come to the house of God, they are not coming to joke. They have real problems. Some of these people, you don't pray over this. That's how it will start growing. One day they will say they will cut the whole leg. You see how it is now? What's that? Whose photo are you holding? Her leg? Yes, sir. What happened to her? What's that? It's, it has been reoccurring since 2021. I can't it even say it. I don't know what. Okay. It decay. What is it? I don't know how to call it, but it has been occurring since I grew up. I grew up to meet it. It has been reoccurring since 2021. It decay. It was bringing out my God. And she's alive? Yes, sir. And her leg is bringing out my God. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. There used to be. There used to be one of these are precious ladies. I just can't remember. I prayed for her. I remember during school of ministry. I think it was her dad's leg that was rotting. I wish I could get the lady. I can't remember her name now. She should be somewhere here. Where is she? You are the one. Come. You have the photo. You don't have it, eh? Bring it. I want to show you something about the power of God. Please bring it. Your life must change, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this dear Cameroonian woman now. Something just starts scratching your leg. And then before you know it, do you know, thank God for what God is doing in the medical field now. That many doctors and paramedics are already, they are knowing the difference between what is purely medical and what is demonic while not violating the ethics of their profession sometimes they call you personally and say listen i'm not just a doctor i'm a christian this thing go and look for a man of god because this one oh you will swallow anything you will swallow and it will still destroy you imagine if this dear woman did not come now and for those of you who are now standing for your parents look at this my dear lady that her mother's like how can somebody be alive and my god come out of your legs the only occasion like that in the Bible was Herod. That he died and maggots came out of his body. Are we together now? How do you, you are alive and maggots are coming out of your body? Kai. When it's time to pray for the sick, please open up your heart to receive. Are we together now? I'll soon start praying for the sick for a few minutes. I want to take time to pray. God gave the grace so that you will live long in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where is your mother, my dear, this lady? Okay, come. Please, let, let me have that lady. I want to show you something. Come, let her come. Please show us the picture before. Don't be embarrassed there. Eh? Look at this. This was the picture before. Please show it to us. I want you to see something. Huh? Look at this. That was, huh? That was the first day. Huh? Okay. Next person. Are you watching media? Help us now. Let's look at this. Sorry for being graphic, but I just need you to see this. Look at this. Look at the leg. 
This is a human leg. Another one. Watch this. If it's not working, no problem. I think people would have seen it. Okay. Are you seeing this? Now, show us the leg. Yes. After the prayer, show us what happened. Go ahead. That was the first day he drank the water. Go ahead. Watch this. Yes. Look at the improvement. Media, show us. Look at this. This was the initial stages of the improvement. Show us what it is now. That was... Thank you very much. I just wanted to show you this to encourage you. Witchcraft is real. This was her father. This man's leg was rotting like this, my, this dear lady now. I'm saying that because I want to pray for you. Place your hand on your chest or any point of contact. And I want you to believe Jesus. Remember what I taught you. The ministry of the spirit and the working of miracles. It comes by the hearing of faith. And if you are standing in the congregation for someone, you can release your faith for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying right now for those of you in front. My God. The power of God is going to rest on some of you in a very mighty way. Father, for these people and their loved ones, every curse, every charm, every enchantment that is responsible for the rottening of the legs or any parts of the body in the name of Jesus right now, by the blood of the eternal covenant, every legal access Satan has over you or your family, let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. My dear sister, because you showed me your own, huh? let me pray for you. I decree and declare now. I'm stretching my hands towards you. What's your name? Sonia Elijah. Sonia. From Cameroon. From Togo. Togo. I'm praying for everybody, but I want to pray for you. Thank you, sir. That you will return back Amen. and you'll come and testify. Amen. In the name that is above all names, Sonia, Amen. we declare your leg will not be amputated. Amen. I cast that devil from the root. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And for many of you, just like you saw that lady's father, I decree and declare from this night, let there be a divine reversal. A divine reversal. A divine reversal. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before you leave, there are three of you. The power of God is coming on you. This one now is for you. It's not your, par your parents or your loved ones. This one is a miracle God is doing in your own life. Three of you. Three of you. God is doing that miracle in your own life. I hope you are not tired, Koinonia. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, return back. What's wrong with you, my friend? Just like that. My parents can't even explain how it started. My, uh, my knee. Oh, I can see. Your legs are swollen. Yes, sir. And your eye too. Yes, sir. My God. Don't be embarrassed, eh? This is a family of faith. It's a miracle service. Father, mercy on this gentleman. Whatever this medical condition is, right now, I stretch my hands. Let there be a miracle for you. You will not lose your eye in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please return back to your seat, everyone. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick now. I'm about to pray for the sick. We have to hurry up now. If you came here with someone who is sick or you are sick yourself, listen please. I want you to lay your hands right now. But the Lord is speaking to me. If you have any heart condition, please listen. Heart condition, I want you to come out. 
the remaining people you can just lay your hands I'm only asking for people with heart conditions that has been medically verified not pain in the chest heart condition please come for the remaining people lay your hands everywhere all the overflows koinonia global I want to pray for you now I want to pray for you now I want to pray for you now heart condition heart condition medically verified Please come. If you're coming, make it quick. I want to pray for you. Then we'll pray for the rest. The Lord just gave me that word. If your loved one has a heart condition, you don't have to come out. You can just stand there for them. I mean those who have it, you are the patient yourself, so to speak. Please come. Come. Glory. Glory, glory to the land. My goodness, I remember T.L. Osborne, men like T.L. Osborne, not just in India, but several parts of the world, they would stand with childlike faith and tell tens of thousands of people on a crusade ground that Jesus was going to touch them. Whether the people believed or not, I do not know. But they would return with dramatic testimonies. Come and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne, and on to you we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb. Upon Hallelujah. Place your hand and let me pray for you. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that medical science tells us that cardiovascular conditions are some of the major reasons why people die? Cardiac problems. You see, situations that they do not know the cause. I want to pray for you. Lay your hands. God instructed me to pray for you. Maybe one of these days we'll have, maybe if God grants us grace, we can just have a special healing time. Maybe on a Saturday we'll just allow people who are sick to come and really take the time to minister to people. Honestly. 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 My dear, something is happening to you. Young lady, look at me. You. Something is happening to you now as I'm speaking. I'm seeing like light come in. Place your hand on your chest. I don't know what is your heart problem, but in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing something happening to you in the name that is above all names. Death. The Bible says the fourth man upon a pale horse having a pair of balances, his name is death. Father, I pray for everyone here with heart conditions of all sorts. I'm not a medical person, but I believe in the great physician. And in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. Whatever is the cause, and no matter how long it has been, in Jesus' name, because you came here, number one, you will not die. I rebuke the spirit of death. Help him out of him now. Out of him now I rebuke the spirit of death out of them now it may manifest as heart problem but it's the spirit of death I say it again the spirit of death leave God's people now I'm seeing something that looks like a vulture just lifting from someone in the name of Jesus, I say it again. The spirit of death, I curse you by God. Be healed now. Mama, be healed. My brother, be healed. No matter what the medical condition is, you'll be healed with proof.
proof. Amen. Beginning from now, be healed. I don't want you to come out, but I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me a woman. You've lost one of your breasts to cancer. And right now, there is, it looks like it has spread to the other one. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, you've lost one of your breasts to cancer. Cancer. In the name of Jesus. And it looks like it's spread to the other one. Be healed right now. All of you who have come here, you return with your testimonies. In Jesus name please place your hand very quickly I want to pray for you now father in the name of Jesus shout a believing amen, amen. you gave us the power over unclean spirits and power over sicknesses and infirmities your people are gathered tonight in their thousands tens of thousands of people crying to experience your healing power father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now everyone in this auditorium all the overflows outside and the many who are following online in the name that is above all names the spirit of infirmity remember in Luke 13 the Bible says that woman was bound the Lord showed me a lady I didn't get to pray for the lady and the Lord is reminding me this is a manifestation of a spirit of insanity. Anyway, in the name that is above all names, I'm praying right now. Every spirit that is behind any sickness, no matter what it is called, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. To leave you now. To leave you now. To leave you now now in the name of Jesus Christ from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now I problems be healed now now hear me I'm going to pray for people right now and we're going to take testimonies here right now I'm, I'm praying for you. Some of you, out of all the ministrations that happened, the power of God has touched you. Remember the sent word, light from scripture, prophetic instructions, prophetic declarations. I'm praying for you right now. Hallelujah. As I rebuke the various illnesses as God will reveal them to me, whether or not I mention them, while I pray, I want you to do what you could not do before. If you came on a stretcher, you could not stand, stand now. If you came on a stretcher, you are holding a crutch or whatever, you could not walk, walk now. In the name of Jesus, I declare, let healing from heaven rest upon you now. Heart problems be healed now. Migraine problems be gone now. Joint pain, severe joint pain be healed now. Someone with severe pain around your wrist, I command it to give way now. The Lord is showing me a woman, you came here, even to climb up to come here, it took you a while. But right now, while you are here, the power of God is touching you right now. Ear conditions be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. I prayed earlier on for a lady with a, a, a tingling, shocking sensation around your molars. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying again for healing in that area. Any representation of issues of blood be healed right now. I cause prostate cancer in the name of Jesus. I say it again, I cause prostate cancer. I cause prostate cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone you've been having a severe case of pile, pile. You are not able to go and use the restroom conveniently. Severe pain, sometimes pain, you even bleed. The power of God is touching you right now. The Lord is healing someone's left eye. You are unable to see well with it. I'm not sure you are completely blind. 
in the name of Jesus be healed now pain around your rib very severe pain around your rib you've gone to do an x-ray and they did not find anything yet the pain persists be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone you have severe pain under your feet literally under and that pain is excruciating even when you lie down and sleep when you get up you have a lot of pain the power of God is touching you right now someone you have something that looks like some growth I'm not sure it's a boil but it's like a projection around your armpit area in the name of Jesus be healed now whether I mentioned your case or not back pain be healed back pain be healed someone you have some things coming out of your body it looks like measles but it's not measles be healed right now blood conditions of all sorts be healed joint pains be healed for someone you will need to test yourself you came here with severely high blood pressure very high blood pressure in the name of Jesus as I'm praying for you it goes down right now it goes down right now now the Lord is asking me to pray for someone I think you have some respiratory problem people snore but yours is a very severe case of snoring even if you sit down you sit down and once you just try to fall asleep, you will start snoring, heavy snoring. This thing has embarrassed you. I'm praying for you. Whatever it is that is wrong with your entire respiratory tract, be healed from it now. Now, whether I mention your case or not, and that includes those connecting from several hospitals, clinics, homes across the globe, let the healing power of Jesus flow through the airwaves and touch you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now here's what I want you to do for only 10 minutes. We're not going to have the time to take all of the testimonies. But for only 10 minutes while we prepare the prayer request. If the power of God has touched you, I want you to check yourself right now. I want to receive one or two testimonies here, whether here or online. I want you to check yourself, those outside, those inside. The moment you see that the power of God has touched you, don't sit back, make your way to the front very quickly. Some of you may need to check with the medical stand. I want you to very quickly check yourself and then let's have one or two testimonies here as quick as we can in the name of Jesus. While that is happening, please bring out your prayer requests. Write your prayer request. Let me give you a minute very quickly. We are still waiting to receive testimonies. Don't sit back. There are testimonies. Please make your way to the front very quickly. Check yourself. You came under the power of God and God has done a miracle for you. Let's celebrate them. They are coming. Celebrate them. They are coming. God is giving witness to his word. For those who are in the overflow outside or any of the overflows, please make your way quickly. It will be based on first come, first serve. So we'll take a few people. You have a testimony. Check yourself. Some pain that was there, now is no longer there. A miracle has happened. Please make your way very quickly to the front. While that is happening, please write your requests. Koinonia Global, particularly for those who are here, write your requests. We'll take one or two testimonies very quickly and then we'll be praying over the request let's celebrate those who are coming to testify please if they are coming from outside to testify allow them come in very quickly let's just take a few testimonies and then for those of you who need to verify your conditions with the medical stand or you need to go to a hospital please do so you are always at liberty to testify let's take one or two testimonies and um Ushers, let's be very, very fast. If you are yet to submit your request, please just wave it where you are. Then you can pass it to the person at your left or right so that it makes it easy for the ushers to pick it up. Hallelujah. Let's give one more minute for those who are coming for testimonies. God bless you. If you are coming for a testimony, we'll take one or two testimonies. It's important we give witness to what God has done. Hallelujah. Okay. If you're ready with any of them, let's just hear one or two testimonies and then very quickly, 
I'm hoping that we're able to finish very quickly and on time. Please, ushers, there are people who, if they are yet to receive your request, don't worry, just take it easy. Pass it to the person at your left and right, the extreme left or the extreme right, so it makes it easy for the ushers to collect. Hallelujah. Okay, let's hear the testimony of the lady and a few of them. If you are coming to testify, please come. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the first time I'm going to have instant healing. In fact, I'm very happy. This, I've been having this neck pain for like a week or more. It has been coming and going. Neck thought, pain? Yes, I thought it's pillow fall, like maybe because of the way I'm sleeping. But immediately you said we should lay our hands on the neck, the first word of knowledge yes i just felt this cold sensation and everything just disappeared and now the neck I'm check yourself for the pain. completely i've been looking for the pain since it's not you will there. never find it again eh? in the name of jesus Amen. may the lord bless you perfect your testimony Amen. in jesus name let's give jesus a big hand of praise yes i'm very happy to be here i left ghana since on thursday I've been desiring to come here, but anytime I want to come here, something will always happen, I'll not be able to come. I have a problem with my leg. When I sit down for long, when I get out, I'll not be able to walk. But I left Ghana since on Thursday. I came here, my leg, I could not, I didn't even know I ever attend the service. But now I'm okay. Ron. Look at this. How long has this been? Huh? Yes, the pain has been there. Place your hand there. It will never return to you again Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate what God has done in the life of this woman. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge of those having migraine. He said he came here with the migraine and he has never been this free. But immediately you made that declaration. Migraine. Migraine. Two How years. How long has it been? Two, Two years. years. In the name of Jesus Christ, place your hand on your head. And it this other person too, three years migraine. Migraine too. Yes, In Jesus' name, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Yes, go ahead. You gave a word of knowledge of someone who cannot chew. She said she has had this pain in her two sides of her mouth for six months that she could not open her mouth wide. But immediately you gave that declaration, the pain disappeared. It's gone and she completely. could open her mouth very wide. In the name of Jesus, my dear, you will return with your testimony. It will never reoccur again in Jesus' name. God bless you. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge regarding someone with pain in the molar. Okay, yes, the molar pain. Actually, for the past three years, I can't really chew very well around my... For the past three years? Three years, yes. I have been having pains around my molars. Okay. Now it's gone. Completely. Yes. You're sure? Yes, sir. You can chew now? Yes, I can. In Jesus' name, it will never return to you again. Amen. amen and amen. Yes, please. Okay, so it's a similar case here. Yeah, good evening, Apostle. Good evening, Church. So last year, my molar started having like sharp sensations. Anytime I drink water, normal water, hot water, I will feel the sensation. So when you were speaking today, I just tried to drink, take a drink of water to see if the sensation is still there and it's yes. all gone. Completely. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it will never return again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. I'm having this knee pain. The knee pain will come and go, but this morning when I was going to church, I'm still feeling the pains in my knee. But when daddy was praying, and I saw somebody like a man in the sky, though the face is not clear, and I'm feeling my body as if something is moving in my whole body, but now the knee pain is gone. Completely. Yes. Which of the knees? Go ahead and bend it. Any pain? No, sir. Any pain? Walk? No. Any pain? Koinonia, let's celebrate miracles. Amazing. It will never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Apostle several healings here of yes. pain, pain in the leg. That's so, under her feet. That sometimes she limps feet. walking. Okay, how long has this been? For like four months or more than. And right now? The pain is gone. Even when I sleep, I woke up in the morning, I have to drag the leg. So if I keep it on a hard surface, I will feel pain. But right now, over there, I was hitting the leg on the tiles. I was feeling normal. And it's gone. Anything. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, it will Amen. never return to you again. Amen. God bless you. Yes, Another please. one with pain in the leg and an itching here. She even came here with her drugs. 
How pain long in has the it back? been? Let us speak. 2019. 2019. Yes, what sir. happened? Just aches in my back. I even thought it was the chair in my office. Even when I came in from Benway yesterday, throughout the ride, I was having You came in all the way pain. from Benway? Yes, I was having serious pain in my back. I had to rest throughout till this morning. But and now, now, it's gone. It's gone forever. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Go ahead. Pain in, the, pain in her back, pain in her neck region. And you mentioned those that see serpent, I mean, under serpentine spirit. She said she normally sees serpents. Where Always. I'm from Nashua State. Okay. You have dreams or what happens to you? Always. I perceive it and I see dream. In fact, the day before yesterday, I saw a serpent in my dream. Somebody helped me to kill it. And I was packing the particles. Okay. Always seeing it. In, inside the bedroom, always. You'll be in the bedroom and see it? Yes. What I perceive it like I'll be seeing it. I separate you from every... Amen. That's your daughter? In the name of Jesus. Huh? This little girl will never go through what you've gone through. And in the mighty name of Jesus, you are free from this satanic thing forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Okay, yes sir. Alright sir. Good evening. So, on 2022, I have these issues. The doctor said I could not see with my left eyes. You could like, not see? Yes. Okay. I have a scar in the left eye. So, I've been taking medications and stuff. So, when you mentioned my case, I now prayed and laid my hands there. And then I opened, I could see everything. Clearly. You could see everything now? Yes. Which of the eyes? Left eyes. Close the one that you could see with before. Walk. Just go to the cameraman. Go to another cameraman. Go back to where you came from. Look at this. She couldn't see with that eye. Don't cry. You see, let me tell you, many people don't know the way to appreciate miracles is to put yourself in the shoes of the person who has received it. You see, only God would know what this lady may have gone through that one eye just shuts down completely and now casually look at this imagine her family members that she goes back and says look i can see now then they test her and say where are you coming from and then you say the house of god in the name of jesus my dear the same way god has opened your other eyes let every door that has been closed be open now in jesus name we pray yes please go ahead sir I've been having um, joint pain in my abdomen. I went to the hospital. They said it was, the first time I went, they said it was muscle tear. The next time I went, they said it was ulcer. The next time I went, they said it was um, a joint um, problem. But the thing kept paining me. I even did scan. They said nothing was there. As, as we were praying today, when I came, I was having that pain. But now everything has gone. Like Completely. Has, completely. It will never return amen. to you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, please. So, Apostle, indeed, distance is not a barrier. Truly. So, um, you called the first time for people who had leg pain. And yes. then I came out for my mom. I was raising her picture. And then I went back and then you called. You, you prophesied with word of knowledge that there was somebody who had leg pain under. And ever since I was a child, the pain would go from one leg to the other, up, down, and different points. For you or for her? For her. Okay. And then she's fully, Where is she? She's in Kaduna. She's Kaduna. following online. Okay. And then I immediately after you called, I think that was the last case you called. Mm. Immediately after you called, I sent her a text. I called her. She didn't pick. Then she called back and said, she's matching it now. She's running. There's nothing wrong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection for her. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, she had a surgery in August to, for growth remover in her side. Let her speak. My goodness. August last year. I did What's surgery. your name? My name is Choma, but let me Choma love it. Okay, go ahead. Yes, August last year, I did surgery. I had a growth in my what eye. What surgery? Your eye? Yeah, my left eye. So after the surgery, if I can't look the left eye. If I'm looking by the left hand side, it all used to be clear. But after the administration, I'm fine. Now. Which of the eye? The left eye. Close the one that was walking. Benga, move and let her follow you. Follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Give Jesus praise. Look at this. She had a surgery. Watch this. She had a surgery on her eye 
and afterwards she couldn't see well with it and now it's cleared in the name of Jesus Christ it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit yes please let's celebrate Jesus stomach pain for the past four years immediately you minister research she felt something left her and the pain disappeared in the name of Jesus my dear it will never return to you again let's celebrate as she goes next person please I used to have a pain under my foot like for more than a week now but right now I'm feeling no any other pain in the name of Jesus it will never return to you again let's celebrate her God bless you five years pain in her feet gone immediately Jeez. you made her yes that she five cannot years. five years I had I have two cakes for about five years since I was in GS2 Father, we thank you for what you have done. In the name of Jesus, we receive her healing, very overwhelmed by the miracle. My dear, in Jesus' name, it remains permanent, perfected forever. In Jesus' name, let's celebrate her. Thank you. Movement in your body for years now. Immediately you ministered that it used to hook her, but as you ministered, something left her and then the pain disappeared. Praise the Lord. As man of God, that uh, there's uh, somebody that something is for the side like this say it's moving and so before that time I go to this uh, clinic I go and see because it's thing on they call my chest like say something they hook my breathing I go there I go and meet them then do tests they say no medicine because then they ask me say that also I said no no and they say no medicine so what happened now madam I thank God the the all the, the pain. movement and the pain is gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, we celebrate with you and we decree and declare that it is gone and gone forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. So on the first of January this year, I opened my door and immediately I wanted to enter inside. I twisted my ankle and I've been experiencing pain since you then. You twisted your ankle? Yes, my left ankle. Okay. So I was even telling my friend that I'm feeling pains on my leg. But as the prayer was going on, after the prayer, I checked my leg. I was Check yourself my... now. I was... Any pain? No, sir. It's gone. Pain. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name, you are perfected even by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. All right, sir. A very interesting... Uh, okay, yes, Very sir. interesting testimony. Yes. Okay, go ahead, my dear. Um, What's your name? Chidima. Okay. Sir, when I was small, I, like, we used to play with tire. So... You used to play with tire? Yes. Okay, okay. Let's, let's allow her to testify. Yes, go ahead. So, in the process of playing with tire with my friends when I was small, Yes. We now went to bush. And you went the, to the bush? Yes. Okay. And in, Let's allow the girl testify. Go ahead. Please. So, Apostle, in the course of playing, yes. a physical snake spat in her eyes. Snake? Yes, sir. In the bush? My God. Then my, Go ahead. My friends, they ran away and I was looking for help. So my neighbor that saw me, and I called her Aunt Linda. So she now rushed, she now picked me, she now said what happened. As she saw my eye was going down. This is how she was rushing, and it was on Sunday, people have gone to church, and my area is few people that are Muslims. So there was one woman that was around, she was washing her car, going to go to church. So this Aunt Linda, she's a Jehovah witness. She rushed me to the woman, telling her that she should please rush me to what, the What is the issue now? So she has been having itches and pain. Okay, as a yes. result, what this, happened? You've been having this, itches? Yes, this evening, it was very severe that my sister was going to ask me whether I was crying. It was very rare. Then I was praying in that place. Then I was praying for um, this grace called favor. Then all of a sudden, the pains reduced. Then I... Then, right now, what's then, the situation? In the course of the prayer, sir, the pain is gone. gone. It's gone. You know, sometimes it takes a lot of courage to testify. Believe me, you have to be in that position. You know you are constrained with time, but then you want to express yourself. Let's celebrate her. The Lord perfect you in the name of Jesus. Yes. This little girl, she had pain in her rear side. And uh, while you were ministering, she said the pain disappeared and she told the mother that she wants to come and testify. Wow. What is your name? 
Benedicta. Come again. Benedicta. Benedicta. How old are you? Six. Six. Brilliant six-year-old girl. May God bless you, eh? So what happened to you, my dear? My rib side, if I want to sit down, the thing will pain me. And then now? He has gone. Gone completely. Let's bless the Lord for Benedicta. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return to you again. May you grow in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. So, Apostle, we need to hear this. Please. So, I've invited doctor here because he's shaking his head. That means he's in shock. So, okay, what happened? Okay. Go ahead. Okay, um, Daddy, um, this child, he has a medical condition we call strabismus. In other words, um, his eyeballs don't move in synchrony. One moves independently of the other. So, when he tries to look to the left, the other one usually doesn't follow. So you find one eyeball going to the other direction, the other eyeball going to the other direction. Yes. That's one. Then secondly, he's also short-sighted. In other words, he can't see objects from afar. Mm. So we just checked. I was just doing some tests behind, and I can confirm without certainty that he can actually see objects from afar. Amazing. Can you see me? Can you see me? Yes. What else can you see? Tell me what else you can see. I can see the board above you with five blue stars on the board. Look at this. Can you imagine? Some of you cannot even see it. I'm telling you, some of you can't see it. Wow. So can you read what is written on top of that keyboard? What else can you see? Tell me one more thing you can see. I can't see that clearly. One more thing you can see. Anything. Allow him. Tell us anything. Look around. One thing you can see that you couldn't see before. Up there. What Chida, can you see? Ch Chida Event Center. I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth. And I found Babuali I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babylon. In the name of Jesus, what's your name? Namdi. Namdi, we decree and declare perfection for you. Amen. May you grow in wisdom, in Amen. stature, in favor with God and with men. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let's celebrate him. Amazing. Right, sir. So, so yes. we have a few testimonies. Okay, very quickly. Apostle, let's have, have all the requests. Please make sure we have all the prayer requests here. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, we have testimonies from Silas from Ontario, Canada. Okay. That you mentioned this case of excessive snoring. And that sometimes just sitting down peacefully, he hears himself snore. Though by, but right now, he cannot hear himself anymore. Praise this the Lord. This is from Canada. Praise the Lord. This is from our sister Blessing from the UK. She says she has heart palpitation, heart palpitation, and her heart beats so fast. Mm. Even now, she's preparing for exams. The same thing is happening. But right now, she has tested herself, and she doesn't feel that anymore. This is from our sister Grace Conga from Tanzania. She says, I have a testimony and I've had difficulty in breathing. Okay. But right now, she's breathing it's well and she's fine. Amen. This is from Sam Ken. He says, you mentioned the case of Pyle and that he has checked. He, has, he usually goes to the toilet and, and releases blood. Yes. But that right now, he's totally healed. The, the pile has gone back in and is perfectly well. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's have that as a final one. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Okay, I just want to thank God. Why I was sitting down there, I was having um, pain, abdominal pain. But right now, the pain is gone. Completely gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Now, because we're constrained by time, sometimes we have to rush the people. A miracle service is really requires a lot of time to be able to minister to people. And um, 
we're trying to work with the time. It's our goal to try to see how, as much as possible, we manage the time, particularly because of the security situation around. So um, my apologies to those who perhaps were not allowed to come in to testify. Every week is an opportunity for you to testify, and then you can meet our media people or our PR people, and you can register your testimony. And um, we're always glad to know what the Lord is doing in your life. Let me request that we all rise, please, and then stretch. In fact, let me do this. Um, let me take the altar call before we pray. I want you to come out if you need Jesus. There's no need cajoling. Please play the sounds for me. You need Jesus. And I want to invite you to make him Lord of your life. There are people who entered this year not knowing Jesus. It is a risk to live in the days that are before us without making Jesus Lord of your life. Our primary assignment in this ministry and in this place is to introduce men to him, to let you know. You see, it's called koinonia. It's the ministry of the spirit, but the goal and the intent is to, re to reveal Jesus. So you are in this place and you're saying, Apostle, please give me an opportunity. I truly want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm going to count one to five. Leave your seat, run right here and give me the honor of leading you to his majesty, Jesus the Christ. Look at this, our beautiful baby. You are welcome, my dear. Come and make Jesus Lord of your life. Jesus loves children. Hallelujah. I'm counting one to five. You want to rededicate your life to Christ or you are not sure you are saved, you join them. Please, those who are coming from any of the overflows, let them come. Once the front is filled, they may have to stand in front of their screens. And this is also to you, those who are following online. Please, I want you to take the business of Jesus very seriously. This is beyond fanatism. This is not just proposing a religion. He calls you to a rich, a deeper relationship for many of you. But for many of you who do not know him, here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life intentionally and genuinely. I count one to five now. One, let's honor them as they come. Two, if you're coming, run, run. Run to victory, run to grace, run to mercy, run to receive help, even in this time of need. Three, the moment I count five, I'll begin to pray. All those who are in the, uh, the overflows outside, you may just move to your screens. Jesus is for children, adults, young people, elderly ones. Everybody is welcome to have this experience with Jesus. Four, one final count and then I begin to pray. If you're still coming, here's your chance. Please rush so that when I begin to pray, you participate from beginning to end. There are people who just come and join. Amen. If you come out here and you say amen alone, you will pray again because you were not saved. You have to join the prayer. You are talking to God who is alive. You are not just chanting, reciting a poem. Amen does not save. You need to make a complete declaration with understanding. May God bless you. Thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters for coming to make this faith-filled declaration may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin right now i receive jesus as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken i declare that from tonight and forever i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you for these precious ones in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you may the lord increase you you will go from glory to glory you will go from grace to grace. You walk as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. May I please request that you move to my right. All of you this way to my right. Counselors will have a word, very brief word with you. And you're back to your seat. I just saw Pastor Masoi. God bless you. God bless you. I omitted you to appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's good to see you, sir. Hallelujah. Please rise on your feet. May I request and then please stretch your hands towards the prayer requests thank you for your patience this is the price that it takes to experience the fullness
stretch your hands and begin to make faith-filled declarations. You are starting this year already. This is not a ritual to just drop requests that you keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping. This is one of the clearest ways to be able to test the faithfulness of God in your life. That you can say, I wrote this and this is what God has done. There is a God that answers prayers. Stretch your hands and pray. I'll bow my knees in one minute and then I'm going to be agreeing with you in prayer and I'll speak over the request, speak over you and we're done tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You have a track record of keeping your word and you're not about All on Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this request. I hope you are joining me to pray. I decree and I declare by the Spirit of grace, you are the God that answers prayer. And Lord, this is a presentation of your people's desire. The Bible says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over this request, supernatural answers now. Shout a believing amen. Supernatural answers now. Every death sentence here represented, we avert it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over your people. For many, by this time next week, you return with strange testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every helper that must arise to see to it that these requests are answered, may my God cause them to arise for your sake. Every evil that must be averted to represent an answer to this request, may God make so happen in Jesus' name. I declare, let fire rest upon this request. For many of you, you will not have to write this again. I say it again, you will not have to write this again. You will not have to write this again. You will not have to write this again. Write this again. In the name of Jesus. There are people here by next miracle service, all your requests will be those for others. Because the Lord would have so answered you such that there will be nothing left again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I stand upon these requests prophetically and I declare unto you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. These Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Now lift your hands and receive in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare upon your life. As I shout the prophetic words, I want you to thunder a believing amen. From January to December, strange favor. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here who is in any financial calamity in the name of Jesus between now and the end of February you have the faith to believe this the helper that will arise for you may God provoke them to arise for you in the name of Jesus any aspect of your life that has refused to move forward you have tried and tried and it has refused to move forward by prophecy I push you go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is dead or dying in your life could be your finances, could be your spiritual life, by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, let that situation and that aspect of your life jack back to life now. 
Hear me? If there is anyone here, I'm hearing addictions, suffering from any kind of addiction. An addiction is anything that has control over you, that you do not have control over it and leads you out of the ways of God, out of the will of God. I break every addiction now. Shout a loud amen. I break every addiction now. All those trusting God for jobs by February miracle service in a place you did not expect if you have the faith to receive I decree and declare may my God give you strange jobs I understand that many people especially around this city have had a lot of constraints especially in the area of their finances from rent to transportation to whatever i have a duty under god to help your spiritual life but not at the expense of other aspects of your life therefore i decree and declare may help and mercy some of you someone will give you a place to stay and you will not pay one naira for it in the name of jesus christ everyone in business here in the name of jesus provided is a legitimate business and glorifies God and adds value to people may my God support your growth may my God support your rising can I pray for your spiritual life it's too early to be struggling with your prayer life we are just in January it's too early to be struggling with fasting it's too early to be struggling with waking up in the night to pray it's too early to be struggling with your world life. Whatever wants to kill your spiritual life already, I declare it must give way now. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Fresh fire for the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every wrong association in your life that wants to deviate you from the ways of God, I caught you from them permanently. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now hear this and listen very carefully. Nobody will kidnap you. Amen. Receive this one. Oh. Nobody will kidnap you. Amen. Nor your family members. Amen. Nor your loved ones. Amen. Anywhere there will be trouble, may your feet not go there. Amen. I say it again. If there will be danger and trouble, may the angel of the Lord take you away from that place. You will not enter a vehicle that will have accident. You will not enter a plane that will crash. But if you enter, it will never crash. Your house and your loved ones will never be a target for attack. Will never be a target for enemies. Every spirit of fear. Now hear me. I understand some of the things that are happening around the nation. It's not unique to Nigeria. Several nations across the world are having to manage issues from security issues, political issues, and whatever it is. Let me charge you believers. Make up your mind that this year the spirit of fear will not have any hold in your life. Therefore, I declare anyone here struggling and suffering from the spirit of fear, be set free from it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, the favor you have not experienced and the honor you have not experienced, I stretch my hands, let it rest on your head. Return from next week with strange testimonies. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of gratitude and thanksgiving for the mighty things that he has done today? The graces that have rested upon your head. Hallelujah.